make wine for several uh, brands in the Napa Valley, several wineries. I make wine for La Coya, Cardinal, Mount Brave, La Jota. I also have a project in Australia called the Hickenbotham. I'm in uh, the McLaren Vale about eight weeks a year. It's five weeks during vintage and a week or two or three uh, off vintage. It is, but it's, it's a great place. It's a wonderful wine region, and I've become part of that community, so I, I kind of look forward to it. it. It's tough on my family. They come over and visit on occasion, uh, but I, I do uh, really enjoy going down there and learning about that terroir relative to the one that we have here. Since 95. Oh, so you've been doing it for a little while. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. The wineries that I work for uh, are owned by a family, the Jackson family. And they were far seeing enough to buy one of the great vineyards in the McLaren Vale, the Hickenbotham Vineyard, which is on the edge of the McLaren Vale in a small community called Clarendon. Um, uh, in that vineyard, there are Bordeaux varieties, uh, Cabernet and Merlot. In fact, it's a great Merlot story, uh, the Australian brand that we've put together. Uh, they asked if I'd be interested in making Merlot down there, or making Cabernet down there, and I decided to make Merlot as well. Uh, and I, I jumped at the chance. I was looking for a new challenge. I speak the language. Uh, that helps. <laughs> and, yeah, it does. And yeah, it's a place that I've always wanted to visit. A uh, good friend of mine, a good mate of mine uh, it, it, within the company has encouraged me over the years to come down there. Now I had the opportunity to go down and actually explore making wine down there. And ultimately, uh, I've, I feel that I've become a little bit of the community there. And uh, that's a really nice feeling to go back to there. The thing about winemaking that is one of the real attractive parts of winemaking is that it's done in some of the most beautiful places in the world. Uh, people that are doing it have a passion for it, and there's something about wine that just naturally breeds conviviality, and you know, that that is infectious to a degree. And going down there, I found the same thing just with an Aussie you know, twist. Well, uh, you know, I've taken what I've learned here in the Napa Valley about Cabernet, about the kind of viticulture that we pursue, and I've utilized that knowledge in my winemaking, but it's a very different place. The McLaren Vale is, has some similarities to Napa, but, but it is not, it's not the same. So understanding that and getting a, a feel for that has been a lot of the job of discovery that I've gone through. And it's helped me then create wines that reflect that. And, and ultimately, I think most winemakers are trying to reflect place. And if I went down there to make wines that were Napa Valley-esque in a place that it's not suitable for, it, it, it would show. So that's kind of how I've pursued that. It's a really good question, and a lot of it was I grasped onto the things I know, which I know a lot about how climate affects grapes. I, I know how to farm Cabernet. I know th where the McLaren Vale and its weather patterns, how there are analogies to some of the weather patterns here in Napa. What I didn't know particularly uh, well was the soils. The soils are very different in Australia from the Napa Valley. The, you know, Napa Valley, our soil age average is around 60 million years. Down there, it's around 350 million years. It's a big difference, and it, and it affects the growth patterns of the grapes. So learning about that was a, was a major part of my pursuit. The style and what the expectations are for Cabernet are very different. So I had to learn about that, and my first couple of vintages, 
every chance that I got, and I still do this every chance, just not at the same level. I was tasting Cabernets from across Australia and trying to get a sense of the different appellations that they have, or they call them GIs over there. You know, the difference between Margaret River and the McLaren Vale and the Barossa and the Eden and the Clare and, you know, who's making Cabernets in these particular places and what is the stylistic side of it versus the terroir side of it. That was a big learning curve for me. I had a lot of help. Uh, you know, I have made quite a number of friends down there, particularly one gentleman uh, named Philip White, who is one of the great wine writers in Australia and a uh, wealth of knowledge. And he and I spent a lot of time together. Uh, and my and my mate, uh, Pete Frazier, uh, who is the person who runs the winery that I make the wine at. So it was, that's been a great process. You know, he's a wine writer that was trained as a geologist, and he's really into that. And he's, he's, he also shares a lot of sensibility with me as far as life. And so we connected almost immediately, and we've become very good friends. Uh, and he is, uh, he's a brilliant man. He's a poet. He's a writer. He's a, he's a, um, a, a thinker. He's everything. He's, he's a good, really good friend, and he's taught me a lot. Sounds like a renaissance man. He, he very much is. I'm originally from the Chicago area. I grew up in Cary, Illinois, which is just outside of the Wisconsin border, about a half hour from the border, uh, in the northwest suburbs, which used to be the northwest rural area, but yeah. the city of Chicago has continued to expand west, uh, west and north. Uh, someday, Chicago and Milwaukee will be connected. Um, to the chagrin of all the cheeseheads, uh, but it's it's uh, it was a good place to grow up. In fact, my daughter is now pursuing her collegiate career at uh, Wisconsin. I'm a huge Chicago Bear fan. In fact, uh, I have a lot of buddies that are New England Patriots fans, and uh, they play the Patriots on uh, Sunday. And the texts and trash talking has been on fire this week. <laughs>